everybody to get sick. We want everybody to have a healthy Christmas, a wealthy Christmas, and uh, we want everybody to have a holy Christmas. And that's why our online worshipers, we welcome you. Let's online worshipers, let's welcome them. Let's, let's give them a horn blessing. Glad to have y'all. We are excited. We love the Lord inside the building. We love the Lord outside the building. It doesn't matter to us where we praise the Lord. We just love to praise the Lord. And thank you for joining us, uh, our online worshipers. This will be taped so that we can load it up a little bit later on today. So you'll be getting the message on uh, online, on Facebook as well as our YouTube network listeners, and so we're thankful to the Lord for you. It is the Christmas season, Advent season, and we've come to praise his name. Our singer's going to bless us with song, and then we're going to have our regular re reading of the scriptures, um, and then we'll come back with some more Christmas cheer for everybody. Amen. Blow your horns if you love the Lord.
and the church honked. If you would turn with me for our morning scripture to Matthew, the second chapter. We'll just read a few verses. Matthew, the second chapter. Honk if you have it. Hear the word of God. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. So when Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Amen. May God add a rich blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Amen. Let us go to God in prayer just now. Eternal God, our maker and our creator. Thank you for blessing us to see another day. A day that was not promised to us. But in your grace and mercy, early this morning, you touched us and our minds are stayed on Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah this morning. We praise you for providing for us. We praise you for your presence. We praise you for your power. We praise you that we can come and worship this morning and shout and, and sing and hear a word from you this morning. For Lord, we're here because we need you. We're here because we've fallen short of your glory. We're here because we've missed the mark, but we're here because we're glad about your forgiveness and your salvation in the blood of Jesus the Christ, your son, Emmanuel. He is with us right now, and we want to say thank you. thank you. Cleanse us, our tongues, our minds, our bodies, our spirits, and place us in a position just now so that we can worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh, God, we have so much to be thankful for this morning. And we are praying for a breakthrough in our government this morning so that those who are hurting, those who are out of doors, or who don't have a home, whose businesses have fallen, whose spirits have been crushed, will see some hope today when they hear your word and when we act like we love one another. We need your compassion this morning in the House of Representatives and the Senate and in the White House. We need it in the Black House, in the Out House. We need it in the Church House and in the house. So come, Holy Spirit, now. Come and bless us like you've never blessed us before. Shower us with your mercy and your love so that we too will feed the hungry and clothe the naked, so that we will welcome the strangers and will give refreshing drink to the thirsty, so that we too will visit those who are sick and shut in and shut out. And last but not least, bless us uh, with the wherewithal to reach those who are prison bound. Thank you this morning for your word that is coming forth. May it be a light unto our feet and a lamp unto our path. And we will continue intentionally to give you all the praise, all the glory in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we say hallelujah, hallelujah, and amen. Amen. Thank you again for joining us. Now, we won't forget our focus for this month, and that is to do something kind to someone else. 
Random Acts of Kindness has been our theme for this month. We know that you have been busy being kind to someone you don't even know. That's the purpose of Christmas, is to serve someone else other than ourselves. And so we hope that you'll continue to do that for the rest of the month. We look forward to hearing some of those stories after Christmas of what you've done and why God has blessed you to meet needs during this holiday season. Our singers are here, and we're singing on the outside today about what we have on the inside. Amen. And so we're thankful to the Lord for the songs of the season. Help me welcome them with a round of a horn blessing for our singers.
the name of the Lord for another chance. Thank you singers, thank you for blessing us. This is uh, the season where we get a chance to really praise God for his amazing grace, his amazing blessings. And I want to thank the Lord and all of you for coming. It's a cool day in Houston and um, the Lord would have it where it's the sun is out a little bit but it's also a little cool, but we are, we are doing our best to stay healthy, doing our best to stay wealthy, amen, and, uh, and wise, and that will, that will work. We want to pray again for our online worshipers, as well as those of you who've come. I never preach with my hat on, and, uh, and uh, so if you will, take my hat for me um, difficult to to talk about the Lord um, with uh, with no prayers and so I need your your prayers I'm not worried about the we the weather if the weather don't worry about me there's no need of me worrying about about the weather amen I'm gonna share with you today from an Old Testament passage of Scripture. I really had a good time preparing uh, for this uh, day, and I'm glad you came. In Micah, Old Testament, in the book of Micah, chapter 5, 
Micah chapter 5, and uh, you will read uh, in your own private time verses 1 through 8, but I'll just read in the interest of time verse number 2. Micah, M-I-C-A-H, um, minor prophet, one of the 12 minor prophets, has these words in chapter 5 and verse number 2. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me what is to be ruler, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. I want to talk about today, thank God for his coming. Thank God for his coming. Out of all the seasons there are in the year, this is a season of thanksgiving as well. We want to thank God for his coming. One of the things that I, I, I really appreciate Micah for is that although he has a minor in his writings, he has a major message. It is, it is this Micah message uh, in this prophetic word concerning the coming of the Messiah. I want you to see some things today, worshipers. I want you to see today the glory in his coming. The glory in his coming. Um, and then I want you to also see the sympathy in his coming. And then, of course, I want you to see the hope and inspiration that he brought when he came. Um, Micah gives the people of Israel help as he gives us help today concerning his coming. Um, he gives us help about his coming because when Jesus comes, he comes to be in charge. When he comes, he comes to take over. He comes to make sure that the world knows he's here. And one of the things that we've got to admit, brothers, and sisters, ladies, and gentlemen, is that when he shows up, he always shows out. Uh, he comes, he comes to deal with Israel's future. I know it looks bad right now. I know it looks tough right now. But God's got a future in mind for every one of us. He's got a preferred future. He's got a future that is bright, a future that is filled with hope filled with preservation. I want the city of Houston to hear me today. I'm glad I'm outside so that those who won't come inside can hear the word Jesus. I'm, I'm glad I'm out here on the streets so that people who are on the street can hear the word Christ. And so he comes, he's, he comes at that particular time in the life of Israel, in spite of the enemy, in spite of the situations and, and the problems that was going on in Israel's time, you do know that Israel was filled with challenges, much like America is filled with challenges. It was dark and had some dark days in Israel, but Jesus comes to bring light to darkness. I don't know about you, my brothers and sisters. I know Jesus. When he shows up, the light does come on. And um, they are in, uh, headed to captivity in Babylon. 
Um, Hezekiah was in charge. Sennacherib thought he was in charge. But, but, but when God is in charge, the enemy has to bow down. I said the enemy has to bow down. So they were in temporary captivity, and yet Israel was free because God is on their side. Oh, my brothers and sisters, when he comes to the hungry, uh, he brings bread. When he comes in darkness, he brings some light. And so he is coming at a bad time, but he's coming with good news. Uh, he is the only one that's fully God and fully man. I said he's the only one that's fully God and fully, fully man. Well, chapter 5 has some questions, and I've got some answers for you. The questions that I'll raise, I'll try to raise them as quick as possible, and then move on to some answers. Look, look at verse number 1 in verse of chapter 5. He said, now, here is what I want you to do. I need you to gather thyself in troops. In other words... He summons the soldiers together. Gather yourself in troops. Israel is about to be taken prisoner. This is what he reads. Gather thyself in troops. O daughters of troops, he that laid siege against us, they shall, they shall smite um, the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. Now that, now that means... That um, when Jesus is coming, the Messiah is coming uh, to Israel when all things are not well. Israel is about to be taken into captivity. Um, and so he says, we need to gather ourselves. In America, we need to gather ourselves. We need to gather ourselves. The time uh, is here when we need to pull together. To let the world know all hope is not lost. All right. That whenever Jesus shows up, that all hope has arrived. So he says, gather thyself in troops, O daughters of troops. He had laid siege. The enemy had laid siege on us. And they shall smite the judge of Israel. Notice now, Jesus is coming. Christ is coming in a time of tribulation. Yeah. Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it just like the Lord to come in times of humiliation? He comes in times when things are not well. That's what he does in all of our lives. He comes in times when we are least expecting him. When we think that all hope is gone. He comes in times when it looks the darkest in our lives. As a matter of fact, sometimes I believe... Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, he waits until you give up all hope. And before he, he steps in right on time. And so verse 1, verse 1 answers some questions for me. Uh, the first question that he answers for me is, where did the Messiah come from? Where did he come from? And uh, where, did he, where did he come, rather? Where did he come? He came to his people... In a time of trouble. I like that. I said he came to his people in a time of trouble. Listen, it is no accident all this is taking place in America, in the world. Jesus is showing up in a time of trouble. He comes in a time of need. And that's what uh, Micah says to his people. In a time where the enemy has laid siege, this this pandemic has laid siege on us. This thing has shut us in and shut us out. But Jesus comes to make sure we understand that no plague, no enemy, no power is above his power. Uh, one of the reasons, one of the reasons why I like the sun. Sun's coming out now. <laughs> sun's coming out now. I like the sun. I don't stare at the sun. I don't go all day long looking up at the sun. You'd blind yourself looking at the sun. But the reason why I know there is a sun 
S-U-N, is because I, the sun allows me to see everything else. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I said it allows me to see everything else. And when I look around myself, when I look around and see everything else, I know there's a sun somewhere. All right, all right. I ought to have some, somebody hit it in the parking lot. That when you look things over, when you look around your life and see there's bread on the table and clothes on your back, you know there's a sun somewhere. And so, and so that's why, that's why he has this good news for Israel. He moves quickly to verse two. Where did he come? He came, or rather, when did he come? He came in a time of trouble. Where did he come? He come, he comes to us who are in need of him the most. Well, the second question is, not only when did he come, he came in the time of trouble, that's verse 1, but verse 1 also answers why he came. See, you, you can't really thank God until you know why you thank him. You, you need to know why you need to thank God. Well, that, that's, that's in verse 1 as well. He says, he, we ought to thank him uh, be, because whereas the enemy has hit us in the face with this thing, it didn't kill us. <laughs> uh, we, may be knocked, we may be knocked down, but we ain't knocked out. Uh -huh. We may be outside today, but surely God knows how to bring us in. One of these old days, he's going to bring us in. Uh, and so... He came, he came. When did he come? I got the answer in a time of trouble. Why did he come? He came because of the condition of his people. We have lost 300,000 or more people since this thing started. And uh, God already knew that because nothing escapes the knowledge of God. He knew that. But this is a symbol of the power of God. It represents who God really is. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. And blessed be the name of the... I wish I had some horn praises here today. Now, 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 now here's, here's the good news. The Lord always gives more than he takes. And, and, and when he takes, he doesn't take it all. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy already today that God did not take everything away from us. We lost some people, and uh, but we, we didn't we didn't lose all. Oh, brothers and sisters, when did he come? He came in a time of trouble. Why did he come? He came because of the condition of his people. But notice verse two says, "Where did he come to?" That's the question. Where? And the answer is in found in verse number two. He says he came. To Bethlehem, Euphrata. Yeah. He came to Bethlehem. He comes. He did not come to a megaopolis uh, or metropolis. He did not come to the uh, Decapolis. No, he didn't come to a large metropolitan city. He came to a small town. He came to Bethlehem. Uh, and it was predicted by and prophesied by the Old Testament writers about Bethlehem. And, th and that word Bethlehem is interesting because the word Bethlehem means house of bread. Yeah. He comes to Israel who's hungry. Yes, sir. Amen. Because they are in captivity and he comes as the Messiah born in Bethlehem which means house of bread. Right. Listen, I don't care how much the world shuts you out from bread. If you got Jesus Christ you can eat every day. Because yeah. yeah. that he is, he is, he is bread in a starving, starving land. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I know I'm holding you too long, but he comes to Bethlehem. And interestingly enough, uh, Micah uses both words for Bethlehem. Ephrata is a, is an Old Testament word for the place of Bethlehem. Ephrata, Ephrata. He is coming to a place of humility. Yeah. Amen. Now, the enemy is humiliating God's people.
But notice Jesus comes in humility. Yeah. Amen. He comes to a place of humility, euphata, place of fruitfulness. So he comes to a barren land bringing fruit. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. He comes to bring fruitfulness. He comes to bring abundance. He comes in an humble kind of way. He could have come riding a white horse with a red robe on and a crown on his head. No, he doesn't come that way. He comes humbly to Bethlehem, Euphrata. And notice Micah says, this is one of the smallest towns in Israel. It is it is a small little village. Didn't even have a stop sign, not a stop light. Didn't even have three or four groceries. No, no, it was a little old place that people didn't think anything good could come out of there. It's a small town in, in Judah. And, and the Bible says, the prophecy is, that there is a ruler coming out of there. Yes, sir. That's why you don't ever write anybody off. It doesn't matter where they were born. It always matters where they're going. All right, all right. And, uh, and so he comes, he comes, uh, he comes from, from Bethlehem of, of Judea. And this, listen, where did he come to? He came to Bethlehem. But here's the next question in verse 2. Where did he come from? Where did he come from? Where did he come from? He came from Judah, the tribe of Judah. Do you know what Judah means? Judah means praise. Amen. When you really praise God, he'll show up. I said when you praise, he comes from your praise. Jesus will come any place, any time when you really call his name. He comes from Judah. As a matter of fact, Judah's number one uh, responsibility in Israel was to lead the battle, yes, to lead the armies. Every other tribe would assemble behind Judah. Yeah, yeah. Judah would be the first one to go fight the battle. They would go fight praising the Lord. Uh -huh. See, You see, when you've got an enemy, when you've got somebody that needs to be defeated, you can't defeat them in your own strength. All right. But when you Praise God yeah. when you praise your way through, when you put the Lord's name out there, yeah. the Lord says that my name is on the line yeah. Yeah. and my uh, and heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God shall stand forever. Listen, listen, this is, this is what the text says. The text says this. The text says, where did he come to? He came... Uh, to Bethlehem. Where did he come from? He came from Judah. But then verse 2 says another word. Who is he that's coming? Yeah, who is he that's coming? And Micah explains it. He says, a ruler is coming. And listen, we need somebody to rule us. We cannot rule. You know the trouble you've gotten in is when you try to rule yourself. Yeah, man. Yeah. The many problems that you brought on yourself is self-inflicted. Wow. Amen. Yeah, Nobody uh, hurt your feelings that much. You allowed folk to hurt your feelings. Come on, come on, come on. But when you got some thick skin, you won't let so much little stuff throw you off. Uh, do I have any witnesses in here? Oh, brothers and sisters, Jesus comes to rule. He comes to be in charge. Yeah. He's not coming to hear what you've got to say. He's coming with his own plan. Right. I know we like to tell the Lord stuff. Sometimes we come to church just to tell the Lord what to do. Right. But we don't really come to church to tell him what to do. We've come to church to praise him for what he's already done. I am I'm, I'm, I'm out here today doing the best I can, not because uh, I did something good, I'm out here like you because God's been good. Yeah. Oh, oh, he comes to be ruler. ruler. Yeah, that's what the verse says. Ruler in Israel. Ruler in Judah. Ruler. Amen. He comes by way of the only begotten of his 
Father. Well, that's another question that I want to raise. I guess y'all say I'm full of questions. How long has he been coming? How long has he been coming? The text says right there in verse number two, he says he's been coming. That is the answer in the last part of that verse. Whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. That is how long he's been coming. He has been coming since everlasting. Y'all missed that. Y'all, he, he's been coming since eternity. He, he has been coming since the beginning. And, uh, he didn't just start coming last year. He didn't just get here because the pandemic was here. Jesus been here. So many people think we need the Lord to come. No, he's been here. You just ain't called on him much. You just ain't talked to him much. You just haven't seen him lately. But if you ever have seen Jesus in your life, you know he's always been here. Oh, brothers and sisters, he's, he's always been here. Listen to what he said. His coming is from of old. From everlasting he came from. In other words, if God is everlasting and Jesus and God are everlasting, that means they were there together. Amen. Before that was a world for us to stand on top of, Jesus has been here. Uh -huh. before, before, before the grass was covering the earth or the sky was painted blue, uh, without a paint, paintbrush, or step ladder, God sent Jesus before the foundation of the world. Listen, listen, listen. I got a few more questions, and I'm and I'm gonna let you go and get ready for your Christmas turkey. Here's here's what he says. He's been he's been coming since everlasting. He's been coming since eternity. Well, what happens when he comes? I, I'm glad you asked me. I got the answer in verse number three. Here it is. Here it is right here. The answer, what happens when he comes. It's, it's found in verse three. He says, therefore will he give them up until the time that she which uh, travaileth uh, hath brought forth uh, then the remnant. He says, it's going to be tough until he gets here. And when he gets here, he's going to bring joy and happiness. I like that. I like that. In, in, in other words, whatever I'm going through, he's going to turn that thing around. Oh, oh, brothers and sisters, I got about five more minutes, but the verse tells me that things will not be the same way always. Yeah, yeah, there's somebody coming, Micah says, like a mother bringing forth a child. She's in travail. She's in, in labor. God's got a blessing for you. Where's the blessing? He's coming. Amen. He, he, he's coming. He's coming. He's coming. As a mother expecting a child to be born, God has a blessing that's just waiting on you. Oh, my brothers, oh, brothers and sisters, here it is in verse number three. Until uh, she brought forth her, her, her son, he, he says right there, then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. He says, I know you've been displaced. I know you've been in captivity. I understand I allowed the enemy to take you to Babylon, but I'm coming to get you. Oh, oh I'm about to get happy. I'm coming to get you. And that you're not going to be in captivity uh, much longer. I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you out. Yes, you, you, you ain't going to be at home forever. Uh, uh, that's going to come a day when you can get back out. Huh? I like that. It, that's going to come a day, Pastor Hilliard, when all of your members can get in St. Luke. That's going to come a day when uh, they will not want to stay home on Sunday morning. There's going to come a time when everybody is going to bow a knee and a tongue will confess. Oh, listen, listen, listen to me. Verse number three says there's coming a time. I like that. I like that. There's going to be a time of joy and happiness. 
Well, I got one more, two more questions, and I'm going to promise you to let you go. Well, the question is, who sent him? Who sent him? I ain't thank God because of who sent him. Do you know who sent Jesus? The Father. Yeah, that is. Look, look at verse number four. It's in verse four right there. And he shall stand in and feed in the strength of the Lord. And now, he can stand in the strength of the Lord because uh, he is the Lord. And uh, he, can, he can stand, which means that he can stand because he's got power. I said he's got power. And uh, he's got power to feed us. Uh -huh, he's got power to feed us. If you're hungry, you don't need uh, a car. You need something to eat. If you are hungry, you don't need more clothes. You need food. Are you hearing me? If you're hungry, you don't need material things. You need something to eat. And Israel, Israel was hungry in those days. They had been taken out of Babylonian, into Babylonian captivity. They were starving. Oh, brothers and sisters, listen at them singing, Bread of Heaven. Bread of heaven, feed me till I won't know no more. No, oh, who sent him? The Father. The Father sent him. Uh, well, verse 5 says, what did he answer the question about what he come to do? What did he come to do? And that's why the song, the songsters were just singing just a moment ago. He came here to do something. He came here to bring peace. I know there's not much peace on television. I know there's not much peace in the world today. There's not much peace on Capitol Hill. I know there's not much peace uh, on at the White House, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. But Jesus has come into this old war-torn world. And he came, but not by himself. He brought himself. He brought peace with him. He brought. He brought peace because he is peace. He brought peace because you cannot have peace without him. Listen, listen, listen. If you please, I'm gonna be happy all by myself in just a few minutes. I thank God for peace because peace. Peace is not the absence of war. Peace is just Jesus. And, and you can have peace and all hell break loose in your house. You, you, you can have peace today. And I'm here not to tell you some peace. I'm here to give you some peace. And his name is Jesus. Oh, brothers, brothers and sisters, you can have peace today. You don't, if you don't have anything under the tree, can I give you peace on the tree? Mm -hmm. oh, my last question is, what did he come, come for? Look at verse 6 and 7. It'll tell you what he came for. He came to restore. He came to deliver. He came to restore Israel back to their rightful place. He came to deliver Israel from their enemies. Oh, brothers and sisters, I close by telling you, Jesus came to deliver us from sin. He came to restore us back to our rightful place. Is there anybody on this parking lot today glad that he came? Is there, is there anybody in here that thank God that he came? Oh, brothers and sisters, I thank God that he came because he came into my own life. Uh -huh. And I hope somebody called the police on me today because uh, it's loud out here. Uh, I, I want them to show up. I want them to come on and arrest me because uh, I've got somebody to shout about. Uh, I've got somebody to tell the law about. Uh, he has been my bread when I was hungry. Uh, been clothes on my back. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, 
there ain't nobody here yeah. in 4200 Lockwood Drive to tell, to tell your neighbor, said, neighbor, I thank God for Jesus. I thank God for his peace. I know what Micah said, but I kept on reading uh, till I got to Matthew's gospel. Uh, and Matthew says, uh, not only did he come, uh, he did come, uh, but let me tell you how he came. Uh, he came uh, on one dark night. Uh, he came uh, one dark night, uh, and the night was shone of dark uh, on the shepherds in the field. Uh, it's the first time uh, that it got noonday at night time. Do I have a witness in here? It was dark uh, all around, uh, and the light was on. Uh, but when he died, uh, it got dark, uh, and the light shined again. Uh, do I have a witness in here? Yeah, Jesus told me to tell somebody He is the light of the world Ain't God alright? Is there anybody here Who can say thank God for Christmas Day He was born in Bethlehem of Judea He was born and they wrapped him in what swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. He was born, and I heard the angels say, Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let us receive her king. Ain't God alright? Anybody here in the parking lot got real joy? Joy! To blow your horn, joy to tell the Lord thank you for coming in my life. I know what you said, he was born in Bethlehem, but I thank God that, that, that 50 some years ago he was born in my heart. Ain't God alright? Is there anybody here with the sun shining? Can say yes. Died on the cross, he died. Matthew said he died. Mark said he died. Luke said he died. John said he died. But then it the old story. They buried him in a brand new grave. But hey, Sunday morning, right early. Sunday morning, he got up. Say, Thank God. Thank God he lives. I want the world to know he's alive. The babe grew up, waxed strong, healed the sick, raised the dead, gave sight to the blind, healed plagues, healed pandemics. Sin is a pandemic. It's worldwide. And Jesus came to heal the, the worst pandemic the world has ever known. It's not COVID. COVID got an antidote. They got a vaccine coming out yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. The only vaccine that'll cure sin is the blood of Jesus. That's all the one. And you ain't got to wait for Pfizer. You ain't got to wait for Moderna. You, you ain't got to wait for Johnson & Johnson. You ain't got to wait for no company. You can have the cure for your sin disease right now. Singers are going to come. Online worshipers today, listen, if being in church is right, being out must be wrong. I've said that before many times. If being in is right, you may not be in a church, 
where you, in the city you're living in, but you need to be. Don't let the pandemic stop you from giving your life to the Lord. Don't let sickness stop you from saying yes. And for those of you who already know the Lord, don't let the times interrupt your thanks. I know it's rough, but let's thank God for his coming. Thank God for his coming. If you're here today and you'd like to come, just get out of your car and come on down. Listen, I'd rather be an embarrassed Christian than a hell-bound hypocrite. I'd come. I'd rather come. I'd, I'd, I'd just come on. If you hate me over there in the car wash, y'all come to wherever they are. On the street, wherever you are. If you, if you can hear my voice, just walk up to St. Luke. Just come on. Just come on. If you can hear my voice, just come. And say, I want to give my rest of my life so that I can I can get the best of my life. That's singing, that's singing. You're coming. is that you have a wonderful Christmas. That's our prayer. But you'll never have a wonderful Christmas without the man named Wonderful. It is our prayer that you will have a mighty Christmas. But you cannot have a mighty Christmas without a mighty God. It is our prayer that you will have a peaceful Christmas. But you cannot have a peaceful Christmas without the Prince of Peace. So it is our prayer that you will be blessed by Jesus Christ this Christmas. Stay safe. Remember, be wise in your gatherings. If, if they don't sleep at the house where you eat, let them sleep. Let them eat at the house they sleep at. 
I know it's tough, but we got to be a little tough this year. We're going to eat at St. Luke. We're going to eat in the same house we sleep in. Amen. Everybody got a house. Everybody got a table. Let's don't transition and transfer. Let's make sure that wherever your bed is, that's where you eat. Amen. 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 That's our prayer for you online worshipers. Join us again next Sunday. We'll be right back here on the parking lot trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save everybody. Come on, let's bless the Lord in this place. Come on, blow your heart.